Hello, remote learners. Hope everything's going well. Uh, this is Ms. Pulliam. We are starting with, um, we're on week seven, and I've got a fun story for you. And let's see, week seven, and this is for grades K-2, so K through two, kinder first and second grade. Okay, we're going to get started. We have just finished up all the books I had on Jory John, and we love that author. And um, I've got some, I'm going to look into some more books by him. In the meantime, though, I've got some really cool things. I've got some new books, and these books are Fractured Fairy Tales. A Fractured Fairy Tale. Think about the word fracture. You ever hear somebody say, oh, he fractured his ankle, or he fractured his, his finger, or his arm, or wrist, or something like that? A fracture is like a break, okay? So... So if you picture in your mind, when you think of fracture, bones breaking, um, and we all know that something that has been broken needs to be put back together. So it needs to be uh, much like bones that need to be rebroken to set. Um, the story needs to be put back together. Uh, fractured fairy tales are broken apart and um, they're ready to be set back together. The most basic definition of a fractured fairy tale is a rewritten fairy tale. And they're usually funny. They'll take a popular fairy tale and change things around and make it really fun. So I think you're going to like this, my friends. Here we go. The story we're going to read this morning is called Goat Tilocks and the Three Bears. Not Goldilocks, Goat Tilocks and the Three Bears. Okay, let's check this out. First of all, this story is by Erica S. Pearl. She is the author. And as we know, the author does what? That's right. The author writes the story. The illustrator is Arthur Howard. And we know that the illustrator is the artist and they do the pictures. We also, uh, we know that sometimes books just have one person's name on them. And that's because that author is also an artist and did both the illustrating, the pictures, as well as the words. Okay, let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a kid named Goatee Locks. She lived down the road from a family of bears. When the bears went out for a walk one morning... Let's see what happens. Oh, look. They're getting ready to go out for their walk, and there's Goaty Locks looking right over here, a little goat going, hmm, watching you. So let's see what happens. Well, you can probably guess what Goaty Locks did. Inside the bear's house, Goaty Locks found three bowls of porridge. She tasted the big bowl, but it was too hot. She tasted the medium bowl, but it was too cold. Then she tasted the little bowl. Mmm, it was just right. So, she ate it. The little spoon, too. And then you know what she did? She went, burp. I think we burped, too, if we ate a whole thing and a spoon. <laughs> Next, Goatee Locks found three chairs. She tried the big chair, but it was too high. I'm sorry, it was too hard. It was high, too. She tried the medium chair, but it was too soft. Then she tried the little chair. Ooh, it was just right. So, look at the little chair. Bear chair. Not a gold, Goldilocks chair, huh? Okay, so it was just right. So, she ate it. Cushions and all. Look at that. She's making a mess. At this point, Goatee Locks began to feel sleepy. Upstairs, she found three beds. She tested the big bed, but it was too lumpy. Can't have a lumpy bed now, can we? Okay. 
She tasted the taste, she tested the medium bed, but it was too squishy. It's a water bed, that's why it was squishy. See that? You sleeping and floating. <laughs> then she tested the little bed. Ah, it was just right. So She ate it, plus the blanket, the two pillows, and a pair of pajamas. Mm -mm, she's hungry. Then, with a contented sigh, and I didn't go over the words, pardon me. Uh, contented means happy and at ease. So, with a happy sigh, Gotilox fell fast asleep. Shortly thereafter, the bears came home. You can probably imagine the commotion. The word commotion means a state of confusion and noisy disturbance. So everything's all confused. It's all over the place. It's a mess. It's a commotion. What's going on here? Someone has been eating my porridge, said Papa Bear. Someone has been eating my porridge, said Mama Bear. Hey. Where's my porridge? asked Baby Bear. Inside the bread and then check the Baby Bear's porridge. Get a load of this, called Papa Bear from the dining room. Someone has been sitting in my chair. Gracious, said Mama Bear. Someone has been sitting in my chair. Hey, where's my chair? asked Baby Bear. Poor baby bear, he's losing everything. They found the culprit upstairs. A culprit is a person who's responsible for a crime or a misdeed. Okay, so they found him upstairs. My bed whale, baby bear, it's gone. Goatee Locks opened her eyes. Above her stood three bears. Look at that. Can you imagine opening your eyes and you look at right at three big bears? Before I go on, what do you think is going to happen next? Think about that. Okay. Quickly, she jumped up and hoofed it for home. That's another one of our words, hoofed. Um, if somebody's hoofing it, it means to go on foot. We hoofed it all the way home. So we going on foot, not driving, walking quickly. Which probably sounds like the end of the story, right? But she's leaving, but it's not the end of the story. So let's see what happens at the end. The next day, Goatilox woke up feeling a little, well, sheepish. She wanted to make things right with her neighbors, but how? Outside, she found her answer. How could the bears resist? What? Okay. Her gift was so pretty, so thoughtful. It was just right. It was so... They ate it. They ate all of it. Look at that. <laughs> and the little one, he burps. He's like, burp. <laughs> and that's the end of that story. If you give me two seconds, we're going to do an activity. I've got to go get the door. Okay, I'm back. I hope you like that story. I thought it was really cute. And what we're going to do next is we have these sentence strips here. 
and I had a fifth grader help me and we picked out, she picked out actually four lines, things that happen in the story. And we've got to decide what came first, what came next and so forth. So we're going to do sequencing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Start with this one. Goldilocks got the bears a gift. Was that the first thing that happened? No, that wasn't the first thing, was it? That was at the end of the story. So we're going to put that one down here. And you know, if Miss Williams is like to take them, you can see them in order. How's that? So we said this one is last. So we'll put it right there. Okay. She sits on all the chairs. Well, let's see. Did she sit on the chairs before this? Yes, she did. So we're going to put this up here, but we'll probably have to move it around, huh? Okay. She ate the baby bear's bed. Now, did she eat the bed before or did she eat the bed after she sat on the chairs? And she tasted the porridge. Well, we know she tasted that pretty quickly, didn't she? Okay. So my friends who are here face to face will be looking at these and figuring out which came first, which came second, and so forth. Um, I didn't at the beginning go over our words, and it's very important to me that we go over um, our review vocabulary as well as our new vocabulary, which I did as we were reading the story. Our review vocabulary. First word's buoyant. We remember that word. If you are buoyant, you can float. That's right. Um, a dozen of something. Now, first of all, buoyant came from our book, uh, Penguin Problems. Um, a dozen of something, which comes from the good egg. Of something is a dozen. That's right, 12. So a half dozen would be a half a 12, and that would be how many? Let's see, half a 12, six. Six plus six is 12. So a dozen is 12 of anything. Delectable, remember that word? That's from giraffe problems. Delectable means delicious. And we talked about that word is a really good one that we can really, we can memorize that one pretty quickly because it's uh, a word that we can use pretty much daily. You can ask your mom it, uh, or you could tell your mom, oh, mom, dinner smells delectable. Or lunch, that lunch you made me was just delectable, mom. Thank you. So if we use the words in our everyday sentences and all of a sudden we're sharing them with others and they're using them. So they're learning a new word as well. And then we're also memorizing and using these wonderful words. So share them, use them on a daily basis if you can. The new vocabulary that we just read the story and we went over some of it, the new vocabulary, um, the word was contented. And when you think of somebody who's content, they're happy, they're at ease, they're at peace. Um, like a sentence would be like, I felt warm and contented. So he's content, he's happy, he's good. Commotion, a state of confusion and noisy disturbance. So if I walked into a classroom and maybe there was a substitute, so we thought we can get away with something and it was really loud, I'd be like, hey, what's the commotion going on in here? Uh, the next word. Gracious. If somebody is gracious, like a gracious host, um, somebody is courteous and they're kind and pleasant. They're gracious. Culprit. A person who's responsible for a crime or misdeed. So let's think about in this story, who's the culprit that did all these things? That ate the porridge, that um, bought them a gift, that sat in the chairs and the beds and things like that. Who's that culprit who did all that and made a mess? That's right, Goatilocks is the culprit. And the last word to, uh, for this book is hoofed. That means to go on foot. We hoofed it all the way home in the rain. So you hoofed it. Okay. Um, we are going to, and I've got, we are going to read other of these um, 
fraction theory tales coming up. We know what the word fraction means now as well. Something to break something and put it back together. Fix it. And we're going to read now Holler Loudly by Cynthia Smith. Okay. I haven't read this, so I'm excited. Mama and Daddy Loudly named their baby Holler because he cried so loud, so loud that the pecans fell from the pecan trees and the prickly pear cacti sprouted more needles. So loud that every hound dog in the county rolled up his ears and tossed back his head to say, so loud, and wait a minute, so had to beg. So loud the armadillos woke from their naps and the turkey vultures dropped their feathers. Hush, folks would tell Holler, hush. see what's going to happen. Mama and Daddy love their son, and they tried everything to get Holler to speak more softly. When he was a baby, they said, hush, nicely. When he was a toddler, they said, hush, more sternly. And finally, when he was old enough to go to school, they found themselves shouting, hush, but it was no use. Every few generations, a loudly baby was just born loud. And Holler had been a lucky one. Holler loved school. He loved art and music. He loved reading and writing. And he loved facts and figures. But every time he exclaimed, yippee ti yay -yo, I love math. <laughs> His words came out too loud, so loud that Mrs. Smarty's chalk burst into dust and the students ducked for cover. Minnie Bell said, hush, nobody cares. Jimmy Joe said, hush, you're annoying. And Mr. Smarty said, hush, no recess for you. Holler didn't like missing recess. How he wished folks didn't mind his voice. How do you think he feels right now? Bad? Bad? Yes, I think so, too. Holler loved to go to the big old theater. He loved to stand in line for tickets. He loved to sit in a velvet seat. And he loved to see the show. But every time he exclaimed, Yeehaw! I love movies! His words came out too loud. So loud that he rattled the chandelier and flattened Miss Poofy's hairdo. <laughs> The ticket seller called, hush, I'm trying to count change. The lovebirds called, hush, pick on the previews. And the usher called, hush, you've got to go. Holler didn't like having to leave the movie theater. How he wished folks didn't mind his voice. So he's a little boy with a very big voice, huh? Okay, let's see what happens next. Holler loved fishing with Gramps and Gus. He loved baiting his hook with tamales. He loved floating in Grandpa's boat, and he loved catching catfish. But every time he exclaimed, Yahoo! Let's land a big one! His words came out much too loud. So loud that the boat tipped, sending them soaring kerplash into the lake. The catfish yelled, Hush, we're out of here. Gus growled, hush, there goes my dinner. And Gramps yelled, hush, no more fishing today. And Holler didn't like being all wet. How he wished Gramps and cats and catfish didn't mind his voice. Holler was feeling blue. What does it mean to feel blue? Does it mean he's happy? No, blue is sad. He's feeling down. So Mama and Daddy took him to the state fair. He loved cotton candy. He loved the Ferris wheel. And he loved the prize-winning livestock. But when he called, Sue! Holler was so loud that the hogs broke free. Then the cattle stampeded and the whole fair shut down. 
I'm just going to be a few more minutes. I'm sorry. Mama's patience had run out. Daddy's devotion had worn thin. But Gramps' barbershop quartet was singing in town square. So they went to hear it. Holler loved Gramps, and he loved Gramps' cat, Gus, and he loved their barbershop quartet. Do we know what a barbershop quartet is? I believe they're right here. The barbershop quartet, they're singers. And let's see what happens here. So he loved it, and he yelled, Howdy! Looks like rain! Holler yelled over the singing. Hush! Daddy scolded him. Your distraction! Hush, Mama scolded. Nobody can hear the music. Hush, the whole town yelled. That's enough. They're not happy, are they? So finally, Holler hushed, and the quartet crooned on. It didn't seem fair, though. Nobody was telling Mr. Smarty to stop thinking, or Miss Poofy to take down her hair, or Gus to give up fishing, or Gramps to forget his songs. Did folks want Holler to hush forever? Being loud was part of who he was. Would they ever appreciate his company, voice and all? Holler took comfort listening to the quartet. He loves songs about cowboys, and he loves songs about best girls. He loves songs about love and little doggies. And Holler realized something. When he was quiet, he could listen better. Quiet times could be fun. There's a revelation there, huh? So he didn't realize that. Just then... Holler looked to the sky, a tornado. It could flatten the whole town. Right then, Holler knew in his heart that sure, there were times to be quiet, but there were also times to be loud. All righty, he screams. So loud that the land rolled and rumbled, rippled and shimmied and shook. So loud that 10 gallon hats, those are the big hats, soared into the sky so loud that Mama and Daddy, Gramps and Gus, men and women, boys and girls, sailed, whoosh, plumb off their boot heels. So, as you see right here, <laughs> it was so loud that everybody just, they went up. Okay. They all fell down. Go away. Holler shouted at the tornado, which blew a raspberry at him. <laughs> I mean it, he threatened on his way to the gazebo. Bah, ha, ha, laughed the twister. Now, he's not nice. <laughs> if you look closely here, I'm going to show you. The twister has a face. Looks like he's sticking out his tongue at him. He's kind of against the twister. He's a man. And he doesn't appreciate our, our dog friend here. Doesn't appreciate the loudness. Okay. So, he is blowing all over town. And then, listen up, you big bag of wind. This here is my town, and you'd best skedaddle. Who said that? That was him. He hollered that nice and loud. Do you think that the Twister is going to leave? Because he said this is his town, they can't come here? Let's find out. And Holler was so loud, so loud, so absolutely, positively, knee-shaking, earthquake, and loud that the tornado blew into a thousand sweet, tiny breezes. Breeze, uh, breezes not with, one and, not with one an ounce of sass. It was difficult. Not only was Holler the loudest boy in the history, he was also a hero. yippee ta yippee yo everyone hollered, yee-haw! Yahoo, 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 sang the barbershop quartet. And Mama and Daddy sighed. All righty. In the future, Gramps declared, when you're loud, 
Nobody's going to come get you. I mean, Daddy sighed. All righty. In the future, Gramps declared, when you're loud, nobody's going to mind. So they're not going to care now when, if he's loud because he's also a hero. And they, they're just so excited because their town could have gotten ruined, right? Let's see. So they all joined hands and they cheered and danced till the cows came home. From that moment on, Holler was quiet as, at quiet times and loud at loud times. Right. So an indoor voice and an outdoor voice. The townsfolk, which the people living in the town, were so delighted, they put his name on a very important sign. Let's find out. And his name they put on the library. His name is Holler Loudly. So they made the sign into Holler Loudly Public Library. Please hush. And there's a monument, a statue of him, and it says, Our Hero. Okay. That was cute. Did you like that? Kind of interesting. His name is Holler Loudly. That's an interesting name. Can you imagine? Holler Loudly. You're telling, you're calling somebody and you're telling them. You're also saying in another way that they can scream loudly, right? Very silly. Okay. I hope you enjoyed our stories. Um, I know I mention this every time, but I'm going to do it again. I'm always going to mention it because it's important to get our confidence where we feel self-assured and good about reading in front of others. We all need to take the time to read a little bit to somebody. Read to your pet. Students love sitting and reading to their pets. And, and if you do, have your parents email me a picture because I would love to put them in the newsletter. They can email it to L Pulliam, P-U-L-L-I-A-M, at winthropcharter.org. And all they have to do is take a picture of you reading to your pet. that will be fun. I'll put a bunch of those in the newsletter. Um, but if you read aloud to your stuffed animal, to your pet, to a family member, or even in front of the mirror, you're getting more confident. Okay. You get more confident. And with confidence comes raising your voice so it's louder. And we always want to make sure that when we read to a group, we're reading to the corner of the room. And when I say that, I mean, we want our voice to project all the way down there. Okay. And we can do it, but it takes practice. Everything takes practice. So work on it. You can FaceTime grandma and read a chapter to her. Lots and lots of ways to do it. Okay. With that being said, my friends, I'm going to sign off for now. I hope you enjoyed library today and i've got some more fun for you for next week have a great week my friends take care